HID stands for the Human Interactive Driving Division. And what we do is really trying to focus at putting the person in the center of the driving experience. We are trying to use AI to really amplify human ability and really create a better driving experience. And so in order to do this, we really need three main research components. The first is really we should understand what people want. When a driver is in a car, we should be able to understand what it is that they are intending to do and trying to predict their actions so that we can best support them as necessary. The motion simulator is, is crucial for our research. It, it allows us to probe things and, and get uh, insights about how people interact with uh, cars in events that otherwise are just too risky or rare to collect data on. And then test it to verify what would it look like. We're building our own models from that understand things such as a heat map of what has the driver paid attention to for understanding how they act in risky situations. Heat map is basically an image that shows you in, in different colors, say red, what the driver has paid attention to and we think he's aware of, versus other colors such as blue, areas that the driver didn't pay attention to and we think they are not well aware of. And we basically use that as a way to better know how to alert them and how to interact with them. We can intervene when we need to, we can warn the driver when we need to, we can prime them to do the right thing. And with these tools, we can basically get a, a better interaction and, and better safety for the driver. The second pillar of our research is if we really want to help a person, we want to build AI that has these expert driving skills so that we can actually then use that as a way to amplify people. We start out with extreme challenge problems such as autonomous drifting in order to really develop our understanding of vehicle dynamics in the most difficult situations. And now we're really starting to take that and connect the dots back to everyday driving situations. We started out looking at autonomous drifting, which is a very challenging, extreme situation. And now we're working to bring some of those learnings and understandings back towards more practical situations. And then the last element is assuming, you know, now we have an AI that has these expert level skills and we have an understanding of what it is that people actually want, then combining these two things and finding a way for the AI and the person to collaborate and share autonomy over the driving task is really the purpose of the third pillar. So our goal is to keep people safe while driving. So we develop technologies to help us understand what the human is paying attention to or being distracted by so that we can create human-machine interfaces or HMIs that might bring them back to the driving task and reduce the chance for a crash or a near miss, for example, by telling them to slow down or steer away from an obstacle. A big part of building trust with the driver is getting the controller to respond naturally, smoothly, and safely in these extreme scenarios. Progressing through this racetrack, and we're doing that using this test vehicle. The reason why it's important to have this car is that it allows us to get one step closer to taking this driving technology and applying it to everyday cars, and eventually helping everyday drivers become safer drivers. Partway through the racetrack, we encounter this obstacle. The car will see the obstacle right when it crests the hill, and it will be going about 75 miles per hour. The obstacle will be about 60 meters away, so it has about two seconds to swerve to avoid it. This is a very tricky situation because when you see the obstacle, your instinct is to swerve quite aggressively to avoid the obstacle because you're not really planning far ahead enough to realize that if you swerve too hard or you apply too much brakes, that this will actually put you off the track after the obstacle. So what the computer is doing is using a predictive framework to take its internal model of the car and look forward quite far, about 120 meters, which allows it to see past the obstacle and into the next turn. And this allows it to plan its combined steering, braking, and throttle in order to very precisely thread the needle within the limits of friction and evade both the obstacle and stay on the road. Where a human driver may become quite startled and fixated on the obstacle, computers don't panic. They plan. Our goal is to develop systems that can support the human driver and amplify the human driver in very difficult situations. In order to do that, we need to have systems that are that is very, very good at driving. And one way we can prove that is to come out to the racetrack and really show that we can drive a car right up to the limits of handling in uh, the racing scenario and also in very difficult emergent situations such as obstacle avoidance. 
So here at TRI, we're really thinking about how we can utilize the AI as it gets more and more performant over time to collaborate with our driver in order to improve safety outcomes for everyone. And this creates a lot of new research challenges. What is the best way for a machine and a person to work together? How do we build trust in that system? You need to build that relationship before any partnership, whether it's between two people or people or machine, is really going to be at its full potential. It creates a lot of research opportunities for us to understand how to do that best.